Now, a year and a half ago, Barack and I each began a journey to make history and to remake America. If the people just about uh, believe you're a Muslim, uh, the, uh, the facts are the facts. My name is Stephen Pidgeon. I was uh, at one point a candidate for the Attorney General. I'm not running for office now, so I get to freely speak. We begin with a couple of facts that are a little bit difficult for Americans to swallow. And those are uh, what's called the Arab Spring. It actually began in April of 2009 when Barack Obama visited Cairo and gave a speech extolling the virtues of the Quran. He greeted them in Arabic. He invited the leadership of the Muslim Brotherhood to that meeting. And at the end of that meeting, he told them in Arabic, I am one of you. Now that's an interesting statement because the Muslim Brotherhood is an organization formed in 1928 whose goal is to reinstate the Ottoman Empire and to essentially assert Islamic Jihad all over the world. Michelle Bachman wrote a letter last year signed by five other senators demanding information from the National Insurance Intelligence Director as to why there were members of the Muslim Brotherhood in the White House. That's right! To make history and to remake America. The Egyptian press, two months ago, released a six names of high Muslim Brotherhood members that are working for the Obama administration, including Ali Khan, who is about to take the number one Tripod. spot in Homeland Security, or the number two spot in Homeland Security. So, the question is, when Obama said, I am one of you, what did he mean? I am a Muslim? I am an Arab? Or I am Muslim Brotherhood? It's a question. But now let's see what the fruit of that poisonous tree is. After we agitated the events in Tunisia and caused the uh, disruption and anarchy to break out in Tunisia, it spilled over into the nation of Libya. Libya had not been at war with the United States or had engaged in any terrorism against the United States since the Lockerbie bombing in the 80s. In fact, they were trying to become a willing partner in the Partnership of Nations and for, uh, renounced their, uh, their uh, WMDs and were opening social programs throughout Libya. This was insufficient for Obama, who began funding Al-Qaeda directly with American tax dollars. To make history and to remake America. Al-Qaeda, as you know, is on the American terrorist watch list, as is the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, the LIFG, who was run by El Belhaj, who was also funded by the United States, as was Al Sharia, who was run by Al Qumu, who was also funded by the United States, as was Islamia Jihad, with the organization that was responsible, quote unquote, for security in Benghazi, that was also funded by the United States. Now, how much funding went into this operation? 20,000 tons of arms were delivered to Al-Qaeda with American tax dollars. This administration, through Secretary Hillary Clinton, is going to announce that it could care less what Congress has ordered about helping the enemies of Israel, about helping those who are terrorizing and persecuting Christians in Egypt, and destroying churches, and eliminating freedom of religion, and are saying uh, they want to rethink their peace accord with Israel, and setting themselves up to be the enemy of Israel, and they're going to give $1.5 billion, not in humanitarian aid, according to this story, not, not food, military aid. Now, my friends... That is an act of overt treason. Yes, yes, you are aiding and abetting known enemies of the United States at times of war. That's right. That's right. That's right. What was the result of funding Aunt Sharia, Islamic Jihad, Islamia Jihad, the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, and Aunt Sharia? The end result was they assassinated and attacked the equivalent of a four-star general, Ambassador Chris Stevens. And during that attack, that attack lasted for seven hours. There was a drone overhead immediately. The White House Situation Room watched the attack happen. And three separate times, Obama ordered Americans to stand down and not defend the ambassador. 
Fox News alert. New evidence in Fox News that the Obama administration knew the Libya attack was an act of terror even as it happened. Fox News has obtained internal State Department emails. The emails showing that an Al-Qaeda-linked group claimed responsibility for the Benghazi attack as the assault was ongoing on the U.S. consulate. He ordered the CIA to stand down. He ordered General Ham to stand the Army down. And he ordered Admiral Gouet to stand the Navy down. There was a C-130 less than an hour away. He refused to deploy it. So who is responsible for the death of Ambassador Stevens and why did he die? To make history and to remake America. Oh, 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 oh. And what kind of weapons are we talking about? How about 20,000 shoulder-held missiles capable of taking down commercial jet airliners? Those will be operative for the next 20 years in the hands of Al-Qaeda. They've made their way into the Gaza Strip in the hands of Hamas. They've made their way into Syria. In fact, on the American tax dollar, we imported Al-Kumu and 60 members of Al-Qaeda into Syria to do agitation on our behalf in Syria, which, by the way, is an international war crime. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because you didn't see Mr. Obama asking for a background check on Al-Qaeda, did you? No! There was no background check. There was no psychiatric check. He just sent 20,000 tons of high, high, highly volatile weapons to known enemies of the United States, and then he comes back to us and says, you disarm. Here's what I say to Mr. Obama. You disarm. Now, the Second Amendment is not just a fundamental right enshrined in American liberty. It is essential Americanism. If you weren't born in America, like Mr. Obama... Uh, Barack has led by example. Uh, when we took our trip to Africa and visited his home country in Kenya... Sheriff Joe Arpaio says he suspects President Obama's birth certificate is a fake. How comfortable are you making these allegations? I'm very comfortable because we did see, uh, seek the advice of experts regarding this. You can build the document. We could take the document apart out of the same file released by the White House. You can't do that if you just scan in a birth certificate or any other documents. What do you say to the naysayers? And there are a lot of critics out there saying this is all, you know, a bunch of BS. Prove it. We did. We proved our point. That document's created. You looked at the documents that he provided online. You. His tax returns. I mean, it's not just any document. His official tax returns that he filed with IRS. And you took his social security number and you e verified that through what da database? Both e verify and SSNVS. There are two major um, organizations, official organizations, official agencies of the uh, Social Security Administration that uh, can be used to check whether it's a valid social security number. Both show that the social security number that Barack Obama is using or used in 2009 in his tax returns, which is 0426844425 was never assigned to him. Only last year they were ram randomized by Obama administration, but until then were assigned by the states, so it was suspicious right away, and it was confirmed by multiple investigators, yes indeed, the number that he's, he's using most of his life is a number that was never assigned to him. We actually found uh, who was it, uh, it was assigned to. It was an individual born in 1890. His name is Harry or Harrison J. Bunnell. So how do you think that he was able to pull that off? Yes, it's a good question. We found that also at some point he used another social security number. And what's important about it, that it was assigned to one Lucille Balantin, the mother of Harry C. Balantin, the chief actuary of the Social Security Administration. Obama wouldn't be that bold to use the social security number of the deceased mother of the chief actuary of Social Security unless he knew that this chief actuary would not make any noise about it. The people just about uh, believe you're a Muslim. Uh, the, uh, the facts are the facts. As the Holy Quran tells us, be conscious of God and speak always the truth. Al-Taqiyya means uh, prevention. So a Muslim can, can lie for the cause of Islam, can lie uh, to keep peace in his family, so he can lie to his wife. Uh, a Muslim can lie to... To make history and to remake America. 
The Obama administration is openly escalating its campaign against private gun ownership and shaking up the top ranks of the military command structure. But is it also preparing to make war on the American population? The answer to that shocking question is yes. Shopping and dining over Thanksgiving and maybe watching some football games, big government Republicans and Democrats were busy shredding the last vestiges of the Constitution. They're talking about inserting the army into domestic law enforcement. Senator Lindsey Graham, who supports this bill, says, quote, the homeland is part of the battlefield and people can be held without trial whether an American citizen or not. Urban military training exercises are becoming an increasingly common sight in many U.S. cities. The Department of Homeland Security has spent the past year acquiring more than one billion rounds of high-performance ammunition. Military veteran and independent journalist David Bard reports that he spoke with a man identified as an insider at the Department of Homeland Security who described urban warfare training as, quote, desensitizing exercises all across the U.S. To make history and to remake America. Adding that, quote, we're being prepared for mass civil unrest in major U.S. cities. Sorry on CBS 2 News, if you see a group of military helicopters flying high and dipping low in the skies above downtown L.A. later today, do not panic. St. Louis residents, don't be alarmed if you see army vehicles rolling through your neighborhood this week. We begin with a story that you'll only see online tonight. The LAPD and elite military units conducted extraordinary counterterrorism training in the skies above downtown L.A. tonight, and Sky 9 was there to see it all. Good dive, evening. Dive, dive, it's dive. a military mission in North St. Louis. Heavily armored vehicles are rolling into town, and while they come in peace, there are all kinds of rumors about why they are here. To make history and to remake America. DHS supplier provides shooting targets of American gun owners. Paul Joseph Watson has this shocking story about how law enforcement targets incorporated is producing cardboard cutouts of quote non-traditional threats. Of course, this is on the heels of the federal government purchasing in excess of two billion bullets for non-law enforcement, non-lethal agencies. What the hell is going on? They're producing targets that say do not hesitate of children, of pregnant women, of elderly men, in summary of society's most vulnerable and typically most innocent citizens on the heels of Homeland Security and other agencies preparing to deal with the American people openly stating they consider them to be potential extremists and the enemies in the event of an economic or civil unrest event. You just cannot believe these cutouts, but they produce them and you've really got to ask why. To make history and to remake America. The people just about uh, believe you're a Muslim. In 1928, Egyptian Hassan al-Banna formed an organization called the Muslim Brotherhood. In World War II, that same Muslim Brotherhood joined with Adolf Hitler to kill, indeed to exterminate Jews globally. And in 2011, that same Muslim Brotherhood overthrew Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak for the express purpose, as the United West predicted, to establish the Islamic Caliphate in Egypt and eventually spread Sharia law globally. Astonishingly, in April of 2012, that same Jew-hating, Christian-hating Muslim Brotherhood was welcomed into our country, the United States of America, into our capital, Washington, D.C., by President Barack Hussein Obama. And not only did he welcome this organization that ought to be declared a terrorist organization, but he gave them 1.5 billion taxpayer dollars to make history and to remake America. And it's time that we do not provide military aid, abetting, and assistance to people that want to destroy Christians, that want to destroy Israelis, and that want to put the world in turmoil and have everyone living exactly as they dictate. If there is one thing that has distinguished the United States of America from the rest of the world, it is our unwavering belief in freedom. And if there is one thing that protects and upholds that freedom, it is the Constitution of the United States.